of it starts now. Storm damage in Gross Point Woods. You think that looks bad? Take a look at what is next door. A 100 year old tree, 100 feet tall on top of this house. Coming up, what it sounded like when it happened. Charges denied tonight against an Amazon delivery driver following an arrest in Warren as protesters march at police headquarters. We begin, though, here at 11 with a line of showers moving through Metro Detroit. Now, certainly nothing like last night, but there is some wind out there tonight. So uh, let's check in with Ben. Ben, are you tracking anything severe for our area? Uh, I got really close for a while there, Sandra and Steve. And after what we went through yesterday, I know a lot of folks are on edge, especially there on the east side. But here's Storm Tracker 4. Now, notice as this line comes in from the west, there was plenty of lightning with it. Uh, to start, but by the time it got to us, the lightning all went away, but there was still wind embedded within this line, and we saw gusts that were over 50 miles per hour. As of right now, we still have some showers left, maybe some gusts. I'd be surprised if there are anything over 40 miles per hour now, but they're still going to be working southeast through the metro and south zone. Here are the gusts that we have clocked so far, 51 miles per hour at Pontiac, 54 in Lapeer, a little faster out there in Lansing at 58. So very strong, but not quite to severe limits. And that's why the warnings did not come out on that line of gusty showers. 76 is where we're going tomorrow. Much calmer day and even cooler for the weekend. And we'll talk more about the good stuff in just a few minutes. Guys. All right. Thank you, Ben. Charges denied against an Amazon delivery driver who was arrested in Warren. That driver, 23 year old Jalen Bond, got into a confrontation with an officer while out delivering a package. Mara McDonald live in Warren tonight and Mara Warren's police commissioner meeting with the National Action Network tomorrow to talk about the incident. That's right, Sandra, as the officer who is at the center of this confrontation remains on paid administrative leave while internal affairs is looking at it. And we've got new information tonight. Protesters marched at the Warren Police Department this evening after this video got out on Facebook. Amandeus Graham was on his way to get gardening supplies when he saw the Amazon driver getting into a confrontation with a Warren police officer. He got his cell phone out. I see the cop grab the, the kid's arm and then they start doing the thing where they like going in like a merry-go-round. They start circling around each other because the cop is trying to pull him down to the ground. The, kid, the kid's like, wait, I got my stuff. I got my stuff. Like, just look, I got my stuff. Neighbors came out and watched as the confrontation went down, which Graham caught the middle of. The officer's dash cam has the confrontation from beginning to end. Get your license. Get your license. You're on the wrong side of the road. Come on, man. That's some food. The warrant officer approaches him because his delivery truck is parked illegally. According to police video, before the officer ever put the driver on the ground, he asked him to show his ID. He wouldn't. The driver became argumentative and refused multiple requests for his license. In fact, he refused 11 times. Police put forward a charging request to the Macomb County Prosecutor's Office tonight, citing its discretion. They're not going to charge the driver. Back here live. Now that Amazon driver has retained an attorney. I reached out to him tonight. He says that his client is not yet ready to say anything just yet, and they have not yet decided their next steps. We're live in Warren tonight. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. Yeah, we'll be following it. Thank you, Mara. After seeing the damage caused by last night's storm, it's clear many families are going to be weeks or even months of cleanup and recovery. Crews spent the day removing trees, repairing power lines. 38,000 DTE customers are still without power. Jason Colthorpe is in Gross Point Woods tonight, where the power really is the least of their worries. Jason. Boy, you are not kidding, Steve. I mean, just look at this at this house. If you take a look at this house, first of all, it looks like it's about to collapse on us, right? That's how much damage is done. And when the storm hit, you couldn't even see the front of this. That's how much wood from this tree that crews have removed today. And yet you look at the tree that's leaning on this house. That's how much still is on top of it. The two women were he that were here, they were about to engage in Bible study. They heard the tree falling, grabbed their Bibles and raced to the basement. Wednesday night storms hit the points hard. In Gross Point Woods alone, there were seven fires and dozens of wires down. But last night's howling sirens 
have been replaced by roaring chainsaws and wood chippers cleaning up those massive trees that were down. All of a sudden it just built up, built up, built up, and then pow! Many homes had roofs punctured and siding damaged. It just had a loud crackling coming all the way across. But few, if any, like this home on Prestwick. I think there's a tree in the house we need to get in the basement. A 100 foot, 100 year old tree in the backyard has basically caved in the roof and has the upstairs walls hanging on for dear life. The gentleman that's cutting the tree down from the top, he said that the tree easily weighs. 150,000 pounds, so that's like 150,000 pounds sitting on top of a house, well, sitting inside of a house. Neighbors rallied to make sure everyone was okay last night, but today there wasn't much they could do other than watch. He said that he's never seen a tree this massive fall on the house and the house was still standing. So, so you think they'll have to tear it down? They're going to have to. He said that they're going to have to. That's a rebuild. Yeah, it's just amazing. No one was hurt. A neighbor a couple doors down, by the way, told me this is the worst storm he's seen in his 30 years in this neighborhood. And by the way, just to give you some perspective, last night, Marl was in front of another house that had a couple trees that went down, two of them, one into another and popped the foundation off. That's about a three iron down the street this way across Mac from here. And when you look at it, how this tree went this way and that guy's trees went like this, you can just see how those winds swooped in here and just hammered this area in a matter of seconds. Just uh, the devastation is just incredible to look at. Steve, back to you. Boy, that is an enormous tree. Jason, you mentioned the seven fires. Have they determined what is the cause behind those fires? It's uh, they're not sure if the lightning strikes. They can't confirm that. But what we've been told from the fire department, mostly it's power surges that went into uh, the, the boxes and caused an overheating there. And that's what started most of those fires. And we're still trying to assess the damage on those homes. As yeah, well, well I'm sure as the trees there. came down, the power lines came down. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Jason. Yeah. In the past 24 hours, 26 Michiganders have lost their lives to the coronavirus. The state is also reporting 218 new confirmed cases. Now, this coming Monday, hair and nail salons as well as barbershops will reopen statewide. Ahead of the reopening today, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan urged workers who are heading back to work get tested this weekend. These constitute the highest risk uh, of spread because you are in very close contact, potentially sharing uh, airspace uh, with your clients. And so we wanted to open up Friday, Saturday, and Sunday the opportunity for anybody in the city who's cutting hair, styling hair, doing nails to come in Friday, Saturday, or Sunday and get an Abbott test. The city is offering the Abbott testing free of charge to barbers, stylists, and salon workers. Results come back in 10 to 15 minutes. With lawmakers in both parties advancing their own police reform proposals, tonight President Trump outlining a plan to address rising concerns over policing during an event in Dallas. We're working to finalize an executive order that will encourage police departments nationwide to meet the most current professional standards for the use of force including tactics for de-escalation. And late tonight, the Republican Party announcing it's moving the Republican National Convention to Jacksonville. That move comes after President Trump wanted the convention moved out of Charlotte due to the North Carolina governor not willing to give the green light to a full-scale convention due to the pandemic. Detroit police have identified a murder suspect they're looking for in connection with a deadly shooting that happened during protests downtown. Police charged 19-year-old Tyjon Heights with first-degree murder in the May 29th shooting that happened near Congress in Randolph. He is still on the run. A second man also faces charges for allegedly helping the shooter the night of the murder. That man is in custody. Southfield City Clerk is now heading to trial on charges of mishandling absentee ballots during the 2018 November election. Sharikia Hawkins is accused of altering those absentee records during the election. Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson says the outcomes were not impacted by the alleged acts. Hawkins was placed on administrative leave. Today, she was bound over for trial on all six of those felony charges. Still ahead, it is one of the biggest employers in the area, and soon Quicken Loans could be making another big move. 
Yeah, we'll see what Dan Gilbert could be doing with that Detroit-based mortgage lender. But first, a woman dies shortly after being taken into police custody. Now her family wants answers. A Defender Investigation, next.